Ah, Leslie. Leslie, can you hear me? Challenge. Hey, what's up, guys? I think I just had a challenge earlier. So please forgive me for the network problem. I'm just waiting for Leslie to come in. What's up, guys? Hey, we're just waiting for Leslie to come in. Um, Um, let me just see if she's on.
Alright. Liz. Hi. I'm so sorry mm. about that. Mm, I didn't even have time to charge my phone when I came back home. So, yeah. Mm, that's okay. So good. Thanks, man, for being patient with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're still talking about you um, leaving radio and, 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 you know, creating She, She, She Speaks Africa. How's, how was that like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I ever planned or wanted or, no, I don't think, I actually never, absolutely ever, ever, ever had any mm. intentions of being an entrepreneur. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, so the thing is I'd registered the company when I was in yeah. South Africa. Yeah. Um, just because, I don't know why there were times when I was just registering company names for like whatever reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd register the name of the company. Um, I didn't quite know what I was going to do with it, but it was registered. Um, but never with the idea of being an entrepreneur. I know that sounds weird. I just think that there was a time when it was cool to have like a registered company in South Africa. It's like, oh, I have a company, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so when I got to Ghana, I came to Ghana. I mean, I visited Ghana quite a lot prior to that. But my move to Ghana happened in March 2020. Um, I remember I had done a masterclass at SA Fashion Week like it's a fashion week at Africa Fashion Week International in Cape Town. Flew from Cape mm -hmm. Town to Joburg. Joburg, you know, took the red light into Ghana via Ethiopia. And I I had intended to stay here for a short trip. It wasn't meant to be a long trip. Um, because I just come back from a December holiday here in Ghana. And then basically I landed the evening of the 14th of March 2020. And it's like, you know, the world was kind of like shaky, things were happening, and nobody really knew what was going on. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, and, you know, like my friend is like, oh, why are you leaving? I'm like, I don't know. Like, let me stay. You know, it was like one of those things. So I stayed, I stayed, I stayed. And then next thing the world shut down. And I'm like, yo, okay, this is real. Um, and yeah, being in Ghana turned out to be a really good thing because Ghana was not one of the countries that had a lot of strict restrictions. Leslie. Oh, guys, yeah, network is not on our side today. Oh, I can see and hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So yeah. basically, yeah, while I was in Ghana, um, you know, it was all through that COVID situation. And um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't come to, I, I basically didn't end up moving here on purpose. It happened by mistake. So the whole world mm. had shut down. But Ghana was one of the countries that the movement was like, you know, you could move about a bit more. Um, yeah. And then people started asking me to do work. It was so weird. Um, you know, AU Nepad asked me to do a keynote address for them. And I'm like, oh, OK. Um, I got, you know, like it was around the creative and culture. I did some work sh like webinars and all of that for um, Africa Communications Week. But it was a weird thing. Like I was being asked to do these things because I was in Ghana. And then um, Master Choice Ghana asked me to work on a project. And then, the, you know, so like opportunities were coming up and I'm like, oh, that's crazy. And then I got offered like a job with like somebody pretty high level in media here. So mm -hmm. I ended up taking that for like a few months. And then I got offered something else with, uh, you know, to do work with a French broadcaster. 
Um, but then they wanted to do it as a business to business. So I ended up registering She Speaks Africa Ghana Limited. So that's how She Speaks Africa went from just being in South Africa to being like in Ghana. And wow. yeah, so I was doing a lot of work and, you know, doing all these different things, commissioning productions, you know, doing some media stuff, like just a lot of different things at the same time. But everybody liked the idea of me being here. Um, you know, I ended up working on different projects. I worked on Global Citizen. Um, I worked on just a host of different things. So it became like, that's how the company was born. It was born actually by mistake. You know, it wasn't like I'd ever planned it. And so now I have like people that I'm responsible for each month. <laughs> you know, like all of these things, like a, it's like a real life thing now. Um, so yeah, when I started She Speaks Africa, it was because the, the French um, company, well, my French um, um, Pinal Plus Broadcasting, um, Pinal Plus um, mm -hmm. Advertising, um, they're my mm -hmm. client from the broadcaster, they wanted to do a business with business. That's basically how that all happened. Um, and so now, I now have this like agency that's doing all of this stuff, basically. The creative agency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's dope, that's dope. So, 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 so far, uh, what would you say were like your favorite um moments in it? Because I saw you've done uh, quite quite a lot of interviews now. Well, okay, so she speaks Africa. Um, what it is is that it's a creative uh kind of storytelling marketing um mm. agency, and what we try to do is we tell multi layered stories about Africa in different ways. So all the projects that we that we do will give an aspect mm. of Africa. You know, whether it's a project. Mm. If it's a project around fashion, it's more likely telling the textile story in Africa. You know what I mean? Um, there'll yeah. be some projects like around politics in Africa, but it'll be done in a creative way, um, with, you know, using people in Gen Z and all of that stuff. You know, we'll, um, there's a project we're, we're launching that'll be on TikTok um, that's going to yeah. be driven by, by Gen Z, which is going to be fantastic. I can't wait for that. Um, yeah. You know, different things like um, we're working on all these various kind of projects. So what was your initial question? I was saying, what, what, what my you say, like, the favorite moments okay. in it, yeah. You, yeah. Since you've started. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so basically, so the, on one hand, that's what it does. So we have a series of IPs. We do um, mm -hmm. marketing and creative strategies for, for some companies. We also have like intellectual property um, projects, like IP projects, which basically tell stories about Africa. Then we have original mm -hmm. production. So the Africa Whisperer is a production under She Speaks Africa. So those interviews, the Africa Whisperer podcast is underneath She Speaks Africa as one of the original oh, productions yeah. that we work on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the podcast is the Africa Whisperer. Um, it's been great. Um, it's always on fire. The kitchen is always mm -hmm. on fire. That's what I tell everyone. It is always on fire. Um, I've been really blessed enough to speak to incredible people. Um, yeah, I've just... I mean, now we're in the second season. It was really great to be to have done a first season, to have gotten three nominations. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and now we're in the middle of our second season, but we're changing the strategy a bit. Uh, it's looking more that we're just going to continue, like not thing, just you know, let it go as it goes. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's just really great. Like I think I enjoy speaking to people, um, and I enjoy interviewing them. Um, because even growing up, I used to have this thing where I, I would feel as though everybody's like a walking book. So if you want to know something about somebody, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. the person who's walking, like, oh, they must have something dope about them. Like, you know, what can I learn? Mm -hmm. What can I learn? And so that's what I try to do. And I feel that even as Africans in general, we don't tell the backstory about people well. You know what I mean? We've not been very good mm -hmm. at archiving that. The reason why True. people, for example, will think, you know, Steve Jobs is amazing. Not that I'm not saying that he wasn't, or people will be like, oh, Beyonce is so inspiring, or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, is because they know the backstory. People know the backstory uh, of the personal story of like, Barack Obama. They know the personal story. You know, they know Oprah grew up in poverty. They know, you know what I mean? We know all of these things. We sit here, we know these things, but we don't know the story of like the backstory of like a Vusiti Mopai that we're sharing with the world. You know what I mean? It's one thing to be as yeah. amazing as who he is. And, you know, it's another thing for people to be able to listen to an interview or to hear somebody speak and to be like, wow, there's something you can learn from them. And I also feel that Africa is like the, uh, in general, but I've always been passionate about the continents. I think it's always come through in my work. Um, you know, Africa is like, especially with the creative and cultural sector, we're basically recolonizing the world, you know, through our, our mm. creative and our culture. And that's what mm. I love, you know. Um, We've been able to show the world. We're, we're basically leading the world. 
in that, you know? So speaking to all these people, it's, I, I love it. I mean, I get nervous before, I get, you know, it's always everything, fame's always, the place is always on fire, literally. But mm-hmm. it, it always comes out well. So I've been, I can't say one interview's been better than the other or one person better than the other because literally every time I've spoken to somebody, I've left inspired, you know? Um, there have been interviews that I've done that um, just before the interview, I've been like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I can't continue. I can't make it. And literally, as we're done with the interview, my whole spirit just goes alive. And I'm like, okay, just keep at it, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So it's just been really great. So now um, the Africa Whisperer is more like the visionary gambit um, in terms of people in Africa who are just doing incredible things. So I'm really hoping to see it go far. We have some amazing plans for next year for the podcast the africa whisperer and you know um, branch off of it of it and also for she speaks africa the parent company we've got some amazing client projects that are coming through in 2024 which is going to be fantastic mm-hmm. we've got some great partnership projects that are coming through which is going to be fantastic and we've got some great original ip um, um well there's two original ip projects that are coming through um that are going to be fantastic so I'm really excited, but it's it's a lot of work. It's hard, and I would not. It's not for the faint-hearted. I would just like, please, if you don't have to be an entrepreneur, don't do it. <laughs> because <laughs> um, honestly, there's nothing cool about it. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was that was very honest. Because <laughs> I was I was expecting like you know you know usually the motivational speakers are like you know, God, let's just start, just start. And you're like, no. Stuff no, you just no, do no, 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 no. I'm like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I tell everybody, I'm like, don't do it. I say, no, don't do it. You know, I yeah. and also because I feel like with everything you do, you have to be intentional about it. It might be a little bit mm. idealistic, you know, um, or it may seem like I, I have my head in the clouds, but I do feel and I do believe that everybody has like a particular purpose in your life like i really believe it and i really believe whether you believe it or not that god is always speaking to people about their lives i really believe it and i really believe that if you follow that you're going to end up where you're meant to be you know like one person's purpose will be different different from another person's purpose but Mm. part of the reason why i say you know if you don't have to be an entrepreneur don't do it if you don't have to be in media don't do it you know what i mean like it's the same way as i would say if you don't have to be a doctor, don't do it. You understand what I mean? Be sure that yeah. you're called to do it. And I think that yeah. the biggest issue we have now is that as amazing as social media is, is as challenging as social media is because everybody seems to believe that, oh, being an entrepreneur is so glamorous. Oh, being in the creative industry is so glamorous. And I, and I hate that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. it's not. Stop telling people the truth. I wish somebody, I've heard somebody say this before, but I literally wish somebody would create an app that showed the lives when things are not working because social media mm-hmm. only shows people when things are working you know what i mean mm-hmm. it only shows mm-hmm. the perfect picture it shows the, the the final outcome the perfect outcome it shows all of that it does not mm-hmm. show you when things are. you know what i mean like when things are like blowing up and if we don't do that we have now a generation of people who believe that there shouldn't be any work that's been done you know and not i don't mean like in terms of like age i mean like a mindset of people who believe that you know oh if it's not easy it's not for me i'm just gonna leave i'm gonna i'm just like hello are you mad mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. or who believe that you're gonna become like an overnight success or who believe all these things no you know True. what i mean i i literally never take i never take anything for granted even with building my business and um and with building uh, the podcast you know people are always like oh but you know, but Leslie, you know, this person, you know, that person, you can do this, you can do this, you can make a call, you can whatever. I don't abuse my contacts. I never do it. I really want to be sure that I'm doing the best that I can before I pick up that call and I say something. There's somebody, like one of my very good friends, like a very good friend of mine, I literally messaged him. Actually, there was two of them. One of them is in Uganda and one is in SA. And both of them, I've wanted to interview them for a long time. And I, I, I sent them both a message saying, oh, I wanted to interview for my podcast, but I've been scared to ask, then I deleted it. But both of them happen to have seen it. They're like, what are you talking about? Because I'm like, just because you're my friend, it doesn't mean that you owe me an interview. Just because, yeah. you know, you're my friend or just because you've known me for long, it doesn't mean that you owe me an introductory email. It doesn't mean that. Yeah. Like, I never take yeah. that stuff for granted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm like, if you want to do it, like, I, I always feel that you have to pay your dues. And not pay your dues in terms of, like, 
mm-hmm. necessarily start again, but you always have to prove to people again why you have to be there. And maybe not prove to people, but let me say for me, let me not speak for everybody else. I always have to prove it to myself. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm always yeah. like competing with myself. So yes. I never, I'm never one of those people. Like, you know, like a, one of my friends was like, um, had actually said to me that if I actually had used all of my contacts, my, like my business and my life should be yay big. But it's like, mm. it's not about that. It's about fulfilling the purpose and making sure that I do the things that I do. And also, again, I'm very protective of my friendships, of my networks, of the people that I know, of their time, of my reputation. I'm very much about that. That's one thing you're not going to hear. You're not going to hear me. And if somebody, if I ask somebody something and they say no, I'm going to be like, it's okay. You're like, bless you. Like, I'm not going to be upset. I'll keep it moving, you know? Because why? Because why do you owe it to me? You don't owe it to me. Everybody has the right to say yes or no. You know, it's not my business to be like, you know, I've been involved with somebody, whatever, like say if it's a hip hop artist and we always had like a dope, you know, um, working relationship before and I felt like we're family and community mm-hmm. and I asked them to do an interview and they say no. They don't owe me. Why do they owe me? They don't yeah. owe me. <laughs> you know what so I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I'm not true. one of those people. So that's why I say like, I feel like we we don't, you know, we, 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 we've we got like a, a mindset, let me not say generation, a mindset Leslie. Sorry. Oof. Yeah. My bad. I don't know. I think it's the network. Can you hear me? Leslie. Okay, guys, I think we lost Leslie. Um, the, the network, I don't know. Uh, her network seems not to be okay. Um, Okay, here we go. I think she's back. Can you hear me? Leslie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, can you? Can you hear me? Leslie? Leslie. Leslie, can you hear me?
sorry. Yeah, cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So what I mean is that we have like a mindset of people who feel like people owe them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, even like with the, yeah, even like with the podcast, for example. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like, say if you're not an essay, you might not know it, but like, there's a lot of like. People are like, oh, you could have just called this person, call this artist, call that person, do this and everything. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not manipulating my relationships for it. You know what I mean? I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna make somebody do do an interview with me just to get like ratings if I don't really know what I want, you know, or just to get things mm-hmm. pulled up. And I'm not gonna force them to be put through something if I don't feel like I'm ready in that stage, you know. And even yeah. when people have been gracious enough to agree to interviews, I mean, I just interviewed a. Uh, Nigerian lady, she's a NASA research um, mm. engineer, um, aerospace yeah. research engineer. She's an inventor. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, mm. literally, grew up in Nigeria till high school, then from uni, she went to school in the States. She works at NASA. She's an author. She's an inventor. Like, she is incredible, you know? Um, mm. And I was, I was in touch with her like once before and everything. Even when I asked like somebody who, like, you know, asking her, her name is Dr. Wendy Okolo, I took it like with kind, like, you know, Another lady that I interviewed um, recently, Anita Erskine, who basically goes to global stages, like Jack Ma calls on her to MC stuff, like it's that level. Mm-hmm. And I've known Anita, mm-hmm. you know, for a bit. Um, you know, when I joined, like Master Show, she had been one of the the hosts that had been on the on the channel. And I, I still, I, I, you know, when I was doing season one, I didn't call Anita until I was like ready for her. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And even yeah. then, I was very gracious about it, you know, um, not from a superficial way, but I'm like, I don't take it for granted. Like, if somebody agrees to do an interview with me, I take that with bo- with with open arms, you know, like, and with a full heart. Like, I'm like, wow, this is beyond a blessing. So every single person, mm-hmm. you know, that has done an interview with me, I take it as a full blessing. There are people who I've interviewed, who I've known for a long time. There's people I've interviewed who, like, even, like, now in Ghana have become close friends of mine. One of them, she owns, like, a, a beauty brand and, you know, um, um, yeah, she, and she's one of the 10,000 people, you know, for Goldman Sachs, she's one of the women that's been mentored by Goldman Sachs wow. globally. She was an Obama wow. fellow. She got her initial VC um, because Michelle Obama recommended her. And she's, like, a friend of mine. Like, she's become, like, a friend of mine, you know, since I've been here in Ghana. Even her. Even though I see her on one level, when it comes to her business, I'm respecting her very well. I'm not just entering mm. and like being like, oh, please, we're together. Like, what does that even mean? You know, like Nom mm. Denny from Agenda Woman is one of my very close friends. I've known Nom Denny for a while. You know what I mean? Mm. And and mm. all of that stuff. And even then, like, um, she's actually the friend that I said, I'm so nervous. You know, and she sent me a message. She goes, what do you mean? What do you mean? Because I want to be mm. very respectful of people. I need to be respectful of their time. I need to be respectful of what mm. they're doing and, and mm. all of that. Do you get what I mean? And I've really yeah. been blessed enough to interview incredible people from like a Somali um, architect who is helping rebuild Mogadishu. He's also, he also works for the Obama Foundation, all of that amazing stuff mm. to the Kunda Kids guys who do kids about Africa, books about African kings and queens. They've got all these international VC investment doing amazing things. You know what I mean? To like literally mm. to David Tale, to a lady from Guinea-Bissau whose mom left Guinea-Bissau with just like the clothes on her back and now she owns like a diamond range. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. let me say something, amazing people. But it's like, sometimes I have to ask more than once. But every single time before I ask, I make sure that I'm ready for it, you know? So every single interview mm-hmm. that I've done, I'm like, I'm very appreciative of it. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just think that we need to realize that nobody owes you anything. I say it all the time, yeah. nobody owes you anything. But in respect True. to that as well, that's just a personal philosophy for me. But also, I also think that even as much as nobody owes you, my other flip side of that is that um, when it comes to people, you see, the, the, the thing that you, the, the gift or the blessing or the harvest that you want in your life, you've got to sow into yeah. other people's lives. Do you understand what I mean? So yeah. it's like, men, like more of, the chances of me saying no to somebody interviewing me is like almost slim to none. Literally the chances of that. I always yeah. feel like, you know, I'm like, wow, number one, somebody thinks I'm worthy of an interview. Like that yeah. still blows my mind, you know? They actually yeah. think I'm worth an interview. I take that as a privilege. And number yeah. two, it's like, um, I also feel like, uh, you know, I also want to be giving people a chance if they think that me being on their platform is important as much as I want people to give my platform a, a chance. We're all in the same boat, you know? 
I mean, I think True. I remember it was like, um, you know, with Trevor, he had mentioned about, and it's it was obviously well documented, Trevor had mentioned mm -hmm. about um, how when he joined the Daily Show, like nobody had wanted mm -hmm. to do interviews and everything. And it was Kevin Hart mm -hmm. who said yes. So we, you know, we should we should remember to be like the Kevin Hart in people's situation, you know, yeah. like um, you know, somebody was saying to me like, oh, how come you're doing an interview with Hip Hop um, Nation TV? And I'm like, you don't understand. I owe yeah. like my very blessings and foundation to the hip hop community in SA. This is the people I am never going to disrespect. It's not happening. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is this is like. It's like my roots, yeah, in terms of media. Mm -hmm. Because if, the, if I didn't have the community that I had in SA Hip Hop, the sessions, the people, people who enjoyed listening to what we're doing on radio, people who would be at the events that we were emceeing, like people who were there, everything yeah. of who I am now would not exist. Would wow. not exist. Because God wow. uses different things in different people's lives to get them to where they are, you know? So those yeah. are just the personal things that I do. The, um, the seed that I, the, the harvest that I want, is the seed that I'm gonna yeah. sow. And also to remember, nobody owes me anything. So period, if in like 10 years or five years or two years, you know, Hip Hop Nation TV yeah. is like the hugest thing, you know what I mean? And I call you and I'm like, oh, can we do an interview? And you say, oh no, you're not available. I can't be pissed at you. Like, what does that even yeah. mean? You don't owe me, yeah. Yeah? yeah? You don't owe me. We have to approach everything with like a level of humility and like gratitude and just like, wow, the opportunity is enough. And when somebody says no, be okay with the no. When they say yes, be okay with the yes, we're having both hands. When you have the opportunity yeah. to help out, do the helping out. If you really can't, yeah. then don't do it. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's how I yeah. that's how I basically think about things. For sure. But no, I, I promise I won't take you down because I mean, um, you guys like uh like the whole YFM family, like um you, AK, uh, and Sansa, I mean like you guys really introduced me to a lot of um uh, a lot of great hip hop music that's how mm -hmm. i fell in love with the whole music and so yeah i've always like i've always questioned like oh why isn't why can't why aren't they giving this guys credit and stuff like that you know so yeah mm -hmm. at the time i was i was still i was still a little baby so i hope yeah. at this time maybe i'll i'll the platform will be able to just you know um give you guys some time and, and you know and talk about so much about the history of hip-hop you know what i'm saying and considering the fact that i mean south african hip-hop is now 40 years old you know so I, I i wish yeah i wish you guys could be the ones you know what i'm saying that um are always invited on platforms and having these conversations because i think um my generation and the next generation to come can learn a lot from you guys you know what i'm saying because like yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because like I, you know, because like I was saying um, to one of my friends, like if you look at the other music genres, like the the rock and rolls and and R and Ps and everything, like they respect their elders. You know what I'm saying? They respect like the people that come before them. It's only us in hip hop we like you have a new generation and then calling the old generation dusty and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So like I don't know why. Why, why we do that, you know? So I, I wish we, we could have that um, relationship with, 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 yeah. uh, with the old and, and the young when it comes to the you, pop culture. You know, the thing is for me, I've never actually experienced that. Yeah. I've never experienced that, but I think it's like, I can't speak for everybody else. I can only speak from my own experience. For yeah. me, I've never experienced that because, again, I never walk into a place on that, like, do you know who I am? I never do that. Mm -hmm. I'm never like, yeah, yeah. oh, I did this, you know, or I was involved in this. I built this city. I'm not. That is the weirdest mm -hmm. thing to me. It's For me, it's such mm -hmm. a weird thing. It's like hearing my dad, you know, and my dad doesn't do this either. Oh, music in our day was dope, you know? And also, mm -hmm. I found, like, within the hip-hop community, in my perspective and the way it's been for me, it's always been mm -hmm. more of a family vibe than other community other other like genres or music or communities to be really yeah. honest you know yeah. and and all of that stuff it's like it's always been like that and i feel that if there's ever any like um i don't know quote unquote beef or whatever all of this stuff it's more a case yeah. of like hip-hop by nature is like that i mean 
I mean, let's yeah, look at yeah. Steve. Like, he's always going on at people, you know. And if you understand the culture, mm-hmm. you're not going to take the stuff like mm-hmm. personal. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't think mm-hmm. I don't. I feel that I th- I feel that hip hop is the genre that allows people to um develop and be who they are. You only have to look at Jay. Yeah. You only have to look at Charlamagne. You you know what I mean? I don't. I don't ever see that kind of thing. Even when people are like, holy, oh, whatever, give you your flowers. I'm like, first of all, I'm not going anywhere, number one. Number two, yeah. my involvement or lack of involvement or how much I'm involved now in hip hop and everything is absolutely 100% on me. Just like yeah. me before was absolutely 100% on me. It was never because other people said it. No, it was 100% yeah. on me. You know, And it's like, yeah. I know how and when and where to enter. I'm, just, I'm never there for the sake of being there. I really don't yeah. care about that stuff. I, absolutely don't care about that stuff you know what i mean yeah. um yeah. it's it, like for me it it doesn't actually it doesn't mean anything that's why whenever people are like you know they're like this and people will speak about stuff like oh the old school whatever whatever and i'm just like in my mind i'm like it's so weird because i'm literally the yeah. person that cares nothing <laughs> i don't care yeah. i really don't i really don't yeah. because it's yeah. it's never been about that like when you're doing something at its purest form it's never about people like recognizing you and i've honestly yeah. been blessed enough that I always like, like I said, when I go back to SA, it can I can be anywhere. Like I can sometimes I'll land at the airport and then the person, you know, like or when I'm flying out the country, the person at the counter will start speaking to me, having like a dope conversation. Other times my dad will be like, Oh, I met somebody. They said this person like likes what you do. You know what I mean? Like hip hop yeah. has done so much for me and it continues to and it allows me to evolve and be wherever. So I I actually I actually don't like people being like, oh, let's pay your flowers now. I'm like, what are you actually talking about? Like, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. fact that I'm alive and I have breath in my lungs, that in itself is a blessing enough. When I think of, you know, people who have passed on and I, you know, I just don't want to say their name because mm-hmm. I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to pull on names, you know, but people mm-hmm. in SA Hip Hop who've passed on, like I've had good relationships with, with quite a few of the last ones. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. stuff is painful because they're not here. Like, I know that they mm. would have done anything to be here. And I'm like, I'm here. Like, God yeah. kept me and they're not here. Like, that stuff is, you mm. know what I mean? Also, yeah. on top of that, at your very best, your legacy is in the people who come after you. Mm. Your legacy is not in, like, if you make 100 million or if you win all the awards. No, your legacy at your very best mm. is in who comes after you yeah. or who is or whose yeah. life is. Is, is, is blessed as a result of you. So I really, yeah. I'm not about that. I really like, I mean, there's actually somebody who I could call now, but I don't want them to call me and tell me off. But like every time they say stuff to me, I'm like, bro, it's not that serious for real. Like, what do you mean? Mm. You know, somebody who I found in the industry, very respected in hip hop, they're like, oh, these kids, these kids. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you putting mm. yourself in that situation? Why are you trying to be like, oh, I'm so, I'm like, why? Nobody said anything to you. You're mm. the one complaining. You're the one doing this. You're the mm. one. Nobody has said mm. anything. Mm. Nobody kicked me out of hip hop. I'm mm. not kicked out of hip hop. If I really wanted to be like front and center hip hop, I tell you now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Literally. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I'm wow. following like the voice of God and the purpose of where it is that I want to be. And I will be involved in hip hop in different places. Me not being now like my hip hop thing was not because of YFM. It was because it was like a predestined kind of purpose and it was like what I do and it's who I am. It was never like wife and came and said, oh, we need a girl in hip-hop. No, please. My dad was buying me Wu-Tang before. Do you understand what I mean? Like he was getting there and then like my mom was like breaking the chronic CDs. Like, listen, my the it, it was before. My 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 relationship with hip-hop was before YFM. What people saw on the radio was just a a, a, an expression of it was an expression and it was like a blessed platform to be able to be on so i don't take all of that stuff this thing this whatever ages and this whatever i really honestly i honestly hate that conversation as much as i hate the conversation of commercial versus under like you know i'm just like what exactly does that mean like if like yeah. one of my favorite mcs like you know is, is j cole the fact that everything yeah. everybody knows him now he's commercialized right but does that mean that his content yeah. is changed i'm like what are you talking about or like if I enjoy Jay's music, if Jay starts rapping about being like broke on the corner of the street, I'm not gonna believe you. So we have mm. these stupid debates that mean like nothing. I listen to mm. everything. Sometimes I'm listening to stuff with like a really heavy like political message. Sometimes like, you know what I mean. I listen to different mm. things at different times because that's what it's meant to be. You know, nobody's like one sentence. So I, all of that stuff, it's like honestly, I really don't care about it. 
Like, yeah. and literally, if anybody asks me to do an interview and they say they want to give me my flowers, I literally say no. I literally say no because mm. I'm like, this is so stupid. Mm. Because you, you're, you're acting like you're deciding my destiny. Yeah. And you've put a full stop where there might be a comma. Mm. And you're assuming things about how I'm feeling about things. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just a lot. Oh man, and I'm so grateful um that you gave us time to you know to speak with you. Um, I, I love the, the the perspective you just came up with, you know, um <laughs> because there's so many barriers and, and I wish those those barriers, you know, I think hip hop could go way much further than that. And yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, but yeah. yeah, the thing is like the thing is like also people need to remember that life happens in cycles. You know, yeah. like it happens in cycles and things happen when they're meant to be happening. And everything has its ups and its downs and its rounds. And sometimes it's mundane and sometimes it's just, you know what I mean? And everything, yeah. and there's so many things that happen and that pops up and this goes off and that comes down, that explodes, that whatever. Everybody, you know what I mean? You just need yeah. to consistently do what you're doing because the light, you know, just like, um, just like, you know, with the, with the, with the sun rising and setting and the rotation and all of that of the yeah. earth, it's eventually. Yeah, it shines again. So we take this thing too serious. We take this thing too serious where we're like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not it's not feasible to think about like, oh my gosh, I wish things like they were like they were back in the day. That's not feasible mm. because that means that there's no growth. Yeah. That means there's no growth. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Like it means that there's no growth. Like if you're stagnant, it means that there's no growth. It's nice to feel nostalgic and be like, yo, that was so dope. Because unless if you were like in it like at that time you know like i, mm -hmm. I always tell people that unless if you were there it is so hard to describe the atmosphere you can't actually describe mm -hmm. it like even when i interviewed bonte we were talking about like master rhythm and all of this and all the dance crews and all of this stuff it's so hard to mm -hmm. describe it to somebody who was never there but for all of us who were there mm -hmm. we know it nobody can say mm -hmm. you know what i mean we know it. We were there. Those of us who were experienced rapper Timmy Jam, who heard it. Those of us who were at Slakes, at 1808, at, you know, Joburg versus, you know, Kappa versus Joburg. All of us, we know it. We feel it, you know? For sure, for sure. Hello? Lee? Okay. Um, should I like say everyone? Up with you. Guys, my bad, man. It seems like we have a challenge with the network. So I hope you guys can bear with us. Oh, yeah. You're Hi. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, so that's what I mean. Like, we all know it. We all feel it. You know what I mean? Like, like if you were there you knew it it's very hard to or if you were there either being a like let me not say being participating because everybody for me as long as you were listening as long as you were at the events as long as you were there you felt it you know what i mean you knew and you yeah. felt it you know as long as you were yeah. there but yeah. it's like you know you're part of the community but it's like it was a time it was a period you know what i mean things have changed a lot for me personally, yeah. you know, it makes me very happy to see people doing so well. Like, I'm like, yo, this is wild to me. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Leslie, you can continue. I can hear you. Leslie. Leslie.
Surely. Yeah, I see. You. Yeah, so basically it's like, I mean, basically, yeah. So what I mean is that if, if everything has its like time and cycles and seasons and we were all there, we yeah. all know it. You, know? you can never replicate the beginning of Back to the City again. You can never do that. True. You can never replicate like rapidly. Is there, I can't hear you. Yeah. No, sorry, it's because my earpiece yeah. went off. Yeah, you can never okay. replicate like Back to the City, the beginning of Back to the City again. You can never replicate the beginning of the Motoko movement. You can never replicate, True. you know, uh, MC Africa. You can never replicate like Rap Activity Jam, like what it was. You can't. It was different people. It was a different mm -hmm. time. You know, it was like a different energy, a different vibe. Does that mean it's never going to come back? It's going to come back in a different way. But we always... um. We always measure, like, say, hip hop in this context. We always measure, like, hip hop is like, oh, those are the, you know, the golden era of hip hop, the golden era of hip hop. Everybody thought they were yeah. in the golden era of hip hop, but it always comes back. It always comes back in a different way. And as long as everybody just like has love for it, it's gonna be cool. You know what I mean? We always do that. We always try to think like that was the best. This is the best. That you know, life doesn't work like that. I'm just like, you know, honestly speaking. Because the, the fundamental thing is that I know that if it's if it's when and if it's my time again to be involved in hip hop in like a more frontline way, because again, people don't know that what I'm working on in the back, mm -hmm. it will be, <laughs> you know what I mean? As it is now, it's my choice. Like, the you know, you have to remember that people give you the, people's love and support give you and you know, either whether whether you make a, a product or whether you you have a, a platform or whether you're on radio or whether people watch your movies or whatever, they give you um, their support is what helps create and build your career. But your voice and your purpose is God given. So True. the voice that I have is God given. The additional blessing yeah. in it is the fact that people accepted me to be a part of what was happening when it was in hip hop. People accepted me and accept me to be a part of what was happening or whatever when it was with Afrobeats and all of that stuff in Nigeria or being a channel or mm -hmm. moving about. The blessing, mm -hmm. the voice was from God. The, the blessing was and is that people accept me. But if we think that people give us the voice and the power, we're going to get so confused because what we're going to do is that we're going to be chasing other people to remind us of our voice. See, when God called you, it wasn't a conference call. There was no conference call. Ain't nobody, you know what I mean? I, he I heard a, a speaker say yesterday, the biggest issue we have is that we want everybody to believe in what it is that we believe. True. So, yeah. Wow. That was amazing. Um, Leslie, thank you so much for, 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 for an opportunity to, to speak with you. Um, we wish you all the best in, in, in everything that you do. Um, but before you leave us, man, um, just, just, just uh, let them know your, your social media uh, handles so they can reach you, maybe for those who want to be part of um, your movement and maybe if you're looking for interviews. So basically, it's just Lee Kasumba across all social media. Um, the yep. company um, socials are the Africa Whisper. I mean, the, the podcast is the Africa Whisperer. Um, so yep. you can look everywhere there. You can go to the website, theafricawhisperer.com. But really, please go yep. take a listen to the podcast. And the business is She Speaks Africa across platforms, um, as well as um, the podcast is the Africa Whisperer across platforms. But if you hit me up on Lee Kasumba everywhere, I'll respond. Like, I'm very cool. I respond to people. And if you've yeah. sent me a message, I'll not respond is because your request has been ridiculous. Trust me, I see it. <laughs> I just, some stuff is just ridiculous. I'm like, no, th these are things I'm not doing. Not today, not today. Not yeah. Happening. I feel you. Yeah. Um, I, lo I love, I love the, 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 the way you're very spiritual in everything that you do. Um, you know what you want and, and um, you understand your purpose. But yeah, man. Um, Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Like I said, for wish you all the best. Um, yeah, man. If you holler at me anytime, if if you need, uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't I don't say know that. How, uh, 
Yeah. Don't say that because I'll do it. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm serious. I'm serious. Um, yeah. I mean, wherever I can contribute, you know, um, I, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. No, but for real, honestly speaking, like just you first of all you know i messed up the other one with the dates and times and everything so a thousand times yeah, yeah, time, yeah. i hate doing that to people so i'm really sorry um, no i understand i understand you know because i i think it was the miscommunication we had on on, on the email on the gmail i think so yeah I but i'm really sorry yeah. about that you know um yeah. and because i don't i don't like that being done to me and i i never want people to feel like i'm being disrespectful and yeah, I, I really, you know, you were, I mentioned something about knowing like what your, you know, what your legacy or what your impact is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, every single time like somebody reaches out to me who's involved in hip hop and essay or otherwise or whatever, I literally just remember, you know, what people don't know is that, you know, I'd, I'd grown up like really loving hip hop and all that for a while. And after my mom mm -hmm. had passed away, um, a few years later, like at the age of 16, I prayed this crazy prayer where I said, Lord, please make me the it girl of hip hop. I didn't even know what I was saying. It's like something my spirit mm. must have been there. And to believe, to think that from there to everything that happened, because literally my life was a movie because of hip hop. Do you understand what I mean? Like that is yeah. unbelievable to me. Like the stuff that I experienced, the people that I met, the culture, the, all of that stuff should never have happened. Like, I should never have been at Made in America, at the Rock Nation, like, never. It should never happen. Yeah. But for the SA Hip Hop community, but for that, you know what I mean? I should never have mm -hmm. been, like, the head of China or Africa. I should never have been, like, I should never have been anything but the hip hop community in SA. And I say that to say this, like, in parting words, is that people need to remember that every single thing that you're doing, like, sometimes, like, your journey it doesn't look as straight as what it is, but everything that you're mm. doing, it's going to, like the seed gets sowed, it gets harvested, it get, you know what I mean? It goes, I can't mm. find the perfect analogy now, but you, you, yeah. you're going to get to a place where you're in that place. You're going to be like, that is so wild to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, 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 it's like, for me, it's unbelievable. So you just never know where life is going to go. You know, you've got to just, my biggest thing is that my thoughts are now is that you've got to like hear for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you've got to every so often shut out the noise of social media. Like just shut the thing down. It's a social yeah. media is fantastic. It's changed lives, all of that stuff. Shut it down. You know what I yeah. mean? And it, like yeah. hear for yourself where you're going. Just because yeah. everything is like, popular now, you must be doing doesn't mean it's for you. You don't know where you're going. You know, and where mm -hmm. you're going is most definitely much bigger than what you imagine. Yeah. So, yeah, I would just say that. I don't know why I said all that, but I did. Thank okay. you so much. I think, yeah, I, I needed to hear that. Um, so, so, yeah, and definitely a lot of young women also um, following under your footsteps probably also need to hear that as well. So, shout out to you. Um, thank you. Much love. Peace. Thanks eh? a lot. Uh, thank For you sure. so much. God bless you. Bye. God bless you too. Bye. Sweet. Bye. Yo, guys, yeah, man. Ah, ah, what can I say, guys? I'm, I'm out of words. She has said everything. Um, the knowledge and the wisdom from that lady, it's amazing, man. Um, leaves me for president, <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, guys, shout out to everyone that's going to be watching um, the interviews. Shout out to everyone that has been supporting us. I mean, this is like the end of November. And this is hip hop month, you know, but I'm still saying we're still celebrating hip hop, even though November might be hip hop month, but it's hip hop for us every day, every month, every year, till till we go down the six six feet underground. We always gonna be hip hop culture. So yeah. Shout out to everyone that has been supporting hip hop nation TV from day one, guys. I mean, the year's almost done. So yeah, um, I think this might be the last interview for this year, <laughs> um, depending on 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 our on our people um, that want to come in. I think they might be busy for now. 
you know. But we'll see what happens, you know what I'm saying? Still more, there's still more people and everyone reaching out. So definitely, but I'm not going to say anything. As usual, I keep my lips sealed. <laughs> Shout out, Mighty Ecliptic, guys. Check us on Hip Hop Nation TV on Instagram, Hip Hop, um, Facebook, Ecliptic. That's my name on Instagram and also on Facebook. So yeah, guys, shout out. And also look out, man, for, for my EP, New Dawn. It's already out. So you guys can check it out. Shout out to, to my producer, 20. Yeah, thank you, that's period. 20 in Ecliptic, New Dawn EP. It's already out, guys. So do check it out. Um, Yeah, man. So holla at us if you need us. Peace.